<laughs> you like the soundboard, don't you, buddy? <laughs> All right, we're gonna have to replace the soundboard with like not the the the, the store bought ones that are in the board, okay? Because those are really cheesy. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to do it up. Can't believe him. I cannot believe him. All right. <laughs> And welcome to the Inside Star Citizen Show. <laughs> this is basically a show where we all hang out, have a great time. We've got the fam here live. We're doing it really late, later than we've ever done it before, because I've been setting up the new soundboard and I still have a lot of tweaking to do. Uh, but it is literally 12 a.m. right now. And I'm very happy to be here because I've been waiting all week to be with you guys. And I've been waiting all week for this. And I noticed here, look at this. Inside Star Citizen River Song. We are talking about rivers. Wait a second. I thought Morphologist said no no work was going to happen in 22. I, I thought Morphologist told us that there was going to be no game development happening in 2022. <laughs> Wait a second. Rivers? That shouldn't be happening right now. That shouldn't be happening. <laughs> Morphologist said there was nothing going to happen in 2022. <laughs> All right, let's watch together and let's have a good night tonight and chill out. Rivers are more than just water. They're a place to explore. They're a place to find harvestables Ooh. that you can pick up. They're a place where everything is amplified versus the surrounding terrain. And the very first river will be in 317 through the hills of Microtech. Since this time last year, we started to take rivers from what was a pretty tech demo to something we could release. We thought we were ready to put this out in 316. We were pretty happy with what we had but we still needed some more changes to bring it ready to put out into the PU. We started by doing a refactor, all, all of our object scattering, so we could have far more power and far more performance when we're distributing objects across the planet. <laughs> right, right, Damon. All we need now are fish in the river, right? But let's let the rivers happen first. <laughs> like we, before, we, before we talk about new uh, object containers and fauna and, and animals and, you know, like all this shit running around, let's just get the fucking rivers in first, right, dude? <laughs> but fishing, I want some fishing. I want some fishing. And by the way, guys, I don't know if this is in this, and I hate to spoil it, if it's actually in this Inside Star Citizen, but for the first time ever, I'm going to show you something here where I was really, really happy to see this. What? Boats. <laughs> like, they're talking about boats in, the, in physics for boats. So, I mean, that's something we were kind of theory crafting, and we were very happy to see boats hitting. Uh, but yeah, dude, I'm on a boat, motherfuckers. I'm going to be on a boat in a river. And uh, I, I better be able to fish off my yacht. You know, and how cool would it be if the 890 jump could come down and land on like a large body of water, ocean, lake, or even a larger river and just chill out in the water and act as a boat since it has that kind of boat shape. A lot of origin ships have that kind of yacht boat kind of thing going on so i hope they're going to be able to kind of adopt the physics of a boat when they get on the water right that would be tight would love that one of the biggest things i wanted to improve as well was to increase the density around the rivers but without increasing the global density of our objects this was going to be difficult which led me to work on on-demand oh, spawn points a system where we can pass a position to the biome builder and will automatically scatter appropriate assets at that location. We now procedurally place on-demand spawn points along the length of the river and around the basin. One of the major things that we had to add was this is going to work for lavas as uh, for lava rivers as well. You know, this is this is basically for lava rivers on planets that have molten lava. 
Mm, magma. <laughs> Dressing presets, uh, which allow us to um, add specific objects around locations like rivers. And we also had to build the river mesh from the ground up, which involves spline mesh building, which took a long time. That did sadly mean that we missed 316, but it's all the better for it, as we've worked on all of these different interactions for the player with the <laughs> yes, rivers. Right. rivers. For example, as of 317, you may now walk down into rivers and oceans as long as you are wearing a helmet. You may explore underwater, you keep your helmet on, you won't drown. Dude, we just went subnautica mode. We just went subnautica like like what? This is this is great. This is this is actually very cool. This this uh I like this. This makes me feel like this is old school eighties cartoons come to life, man. I'm underwater chilling out looking around man are you fucking kidding me man better be some motherfucking underwater bases eventually see this is gonna this is gonna bring out some feature creep uh oh better watch out <laughs> better watch out star nautica up in here right sketch dude this is making me excited in my no no spot I, I i love this i love seeing this shit you know and and having the helmet in there shit Man, the only thing left that they could do to even excite me more is put Godzilla up in this bitch. They put Godzilla up under the water there. I'm all in. Give me a Godzilla monster up in here, and I'm, like, got my helmet on, and I'm, like, looking around, and I'm, I'm just like, Rawr! Rawr! I'll be like, motherfuckers made me the game that I've been waiting for all my life. I'm like Subnautica, Star Nautica on this shit, and, I, and I'm seeing, like, uh, goddamn Godzilla under the water here. Fuck, man fucking swim to the surface get on the oh shit there's oh god there's godzilla on there and i'm on the sand and i'm like oh my god and then there's like mafra mafra like mafra coming down oh my god I, I and then like a giant battle like two animals fighting one another locked in a sexual ferocity unlike anything that's anything anybody's ever seen god damn it this is the feature creep that i want give me two crazy fucking animals just fighting in front of me like a water animal popping out i was just under the water chilling out i had my helmet on you understand I didn't know anything was going to happen. I was just under the water chilling out, right? And then here I see a, a, a motherfucking Godzilla creature under the water. I'm running out. I'm like, oh, shit. I'm trying to get out. I'm trying to run out. I can't because I'm under the water. I'm doing, I'm doing a crazy little fucking Star Citizen physics thing trying to get out. I finally get out, and then there's a giant flying creature. And then you got a giant flying creature fighting a, a, a land water creature in front of me, in front of my eyes. You just made the best game. You, you just, you just, I want that i want it they want a spaceship flying along dropping a fucking bomb on the two and incinerate them right in front of my eyes you just made the perfect game for me motherfuckers all you gotta do all you gotta do all you gotta do wait, wait. <laughs> thank you paul how you doing buddy comes in here like a a, a beautiful angel look at you coming in here like a beautiful angel it's like look at all these sounds i got on my board right now i'm, do I'm doing the cheesy sounds apologies but this this is like paul he come in here he's like look at this look at this man while i'm waxing poetic about like animals i want to see underwater paul just comes in raids like a boss like a viking like a like a drunken teacher viking coming in here helping me out thank you paul i appreciate you bro let's keep going you can now drive <laughs> gravelet bikes over both Thanks, oceans Paul. and rivers it's good to see you, buddy. without just falling through and exploding. We also have harvestables around the river's edge for you to explore and collect. Good. We also did a rework of our water caustic system, meaning that there are water caustics thrown by the river and its base. That deserves a party. Thank you, Zalen. Thank you, Zalen. I appreciate you, man. Thank you for that support. God bless you, dude. God bless you. I, I feel like Paul coming in, that deserved it. We need a little Paul polka going up in there. That's good. Jason, both onto objects above the water like your ship. We come like one river, says so. And onto the surface below. Planet content team haven't had a full chance to take a visit of the oceans yet. So while there are assets down there, you can... Homeboy's rocking a Gibson. 
I got to respect that. It looks like a Gibson or an Epiphone. I can't tell. If it's a Gibson, good for you, but it might be an Epiphone. But I like this, dude. Uh, you got to respect that. Guitar is in the background. And expect improvements in coming patches. The next big improvement to rivers is going to rivers be look beautiful. fizz areas. So you can throw things into the river and watch them flow down. As well, All I'll right. work on the foliage shader, which is going to create more varied and seasonal foliage across our planets as well as just the rivers. Seasonal foliage based upon dynamic weather, obviously baby steps, right? Down the road. But how cool would that be? Like foliage based upon the season, you know, the dynamic weather comes in, uh, you know, particular foliage, become, you know, popping up because of the dynamic weather system uh, going away. Very similar to what I want to see with with salvage or or Rex. Uh, you know, you know, I, I want to see this happen naturally. We talked about that two or three inside Star Citizens ago where, you know, we want to see this happen naturally. We want to see the ships come down. And then people said, well, DG, you can't do that because if you did that, that would be insane amount of uh, a, a data for the servers to handle because you're going to have all these additional wrecks. But like eventually what should happen is, is that after they've been salvaged and picked apart or there is a time duration that these that these ships will then basically deteriorate and go away. So, you know, like I, I must not have explained well enough to people, but that's what really what I'm talking about is, you know, these 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 ships come down based upon like some atmospheric battle or space battle. They come down, they're wrecks on the ground, people salvage them, pick apart all they can, and the weather just comes in and like there's a time duration and they just disappear eventually. They disintegrate. Very similar to what I would like to see with the fauna as well. You know, this these are big asks. Some people would say that's not fucking important. I would disagree with them and say that's why I'm into the game because I love the details, the 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 devils in the details. Yes, I want that shit we've been waiting this long so so much already it, 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 what is the fucking point of of arguing about waiting longer when we've already waited as long as we have i want is the best fucking experience the best game that i can have and you know if that makes me sound like a white knight then deal with that shit because that's why i'm in this shit i want a game that's different no bullshit real talk i don't want your fucking standard bullshit game that you can get just about anywhere that's why the game's successful. That's why people gravitate to it. That's why people argue about it all the fucking time. I want it. I want it. <laughs> if you don't want it, okay, great. You don't want it. That's what I would like. In the future, what I want is for an artist to be creating a planet and say, okay, <laughs> I'm happy with the elevation. Let's create <laughs> a river system and for it to be done. And we're not quite at that stage mm. yet. Each river is maybe one or two clicks but it needs to be hundreds of rivers <laughs> per planet without even thinking about it. Max is having an argument with himself. <laughs> the river in 317 doesn't have any missions or QT markers to find it with, so you will have to go exploring. To find no, we don't. Yes, we do. No, we don't. Yes, we do. <laughs> Look, I, I, <laughs> who's on first? <laughs> I love you, Max. That's fucking great, dude. You always make me laugh, man. I, you like it's great. See, like I was like, was that a different person who commented there? <laughs> Find it. Although, hopefully, this video has been a help. Oh, River shit, Tech dude. is more than just adding running water to the surface of our planets and moons. It's the collective gathering of mesh and shader, erosion and foliage traversal over under and through the surface. jesus jared <laughs> and it's the harbinger of things like lava fields and roads and so much more uh -huh. and up next on this week's show a look at upcoming efforts to improve our reputation and hostility systems in alpha 317 and beyond oh you mean there's more development happening in 2022 i didn't realize that some content creators were telling me that there was going to be no development happening in 2022 wait a second you mean that was a lie <laughs> I thought I thought all development stopped. I thought all development was just gonna grind to a halt. Wait a second. Oh, oh, wait, wait. There's there's actually development happening in 2022. Wow. You would never know watching YouTube. You would never know it. <laughs> we just got done running Nine Tails Zenfret <laughs> and Jump Town. 
You seem to be really enjoying <laughs> these dynamic events. Right. You're running bounty missions, you're running assassinations, all these things, and we're really excited about that. As a designer, it's pretty difficult to look at these and not see all the little things that we can do to make this better, to make these not just good, but great. And in order to do that in the near future, we're going to be implementing some new features into the reputation and hostility systems. With the current reputation system, all of your relationships to NPCs are static. That means that essentially you can't become friends with the, the criminals and you can't become enemies with uh, the law enforcement. In addition, if you shoot someone, just a single bullet can make it so that everyone around you suddenly starts raining hell down upon you. And that can be a pretty awful- But I want to be friends with criminals. Uh, uh what? <laughs> experience. They have more fun. We're going to be looking to address that in uh, a multitude of ways. We're going to be looking to have Slaunch, everybody driving and hostility. So essentially how NPCs react to you and how you see them <laughs> as you become uh, more and more friendly, uh, build up that affinity with NPCs of a certain organization, they will begin to shift their opinion of you. You can actually do missions or content for Ninetales, and if you get to a certain point in their bar, they will stop shooting at you and start just letting you go by, and then eventually even Love start it. protecting you. Love by it. By the same measure, if you start uh, Love attacking it. law enforcement or committing too many crimes, after a certain point, uh, Crusader Security is going to start hunting you down and attacking <laughs> you um, on site instead of waiting for you to commit a crime. On the side of making it so that people don't attack you when you just fire a single bullet, we're looking at in the slightly more distant future where if you are in the green zone with a organization, if they really, really like you, then they actually have a larger threshold that you have to break over in order to cause them to want to attack you. Um, we want we don't want it to be global so that players can't abuse it but we do want it to be something that is a bit of a benefit if you go and make friends with these people good point ryu says i wonder if the prison's max time will increase again then because let's say you spend one whole day constantly doing missions to get neutral with uee again because you were red with them but instead players spend six hours in prison to become neutral instead not doing anything i think there will be some type of dynamic uh some type of dynamic changed uh, based upon your relationship and the new systems is going to be com coming about. So, yes, I don't know how drastic that will be, Ryu, but that is a very good point. You know, and that is a very good point. Damon wants to bring us back to reality and let us know that the, re that the, the world that we're living in is a shithole. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, we're, we're actually on here to escape reality, Damon. I don't know if you've got the message, buddy. <laughs> like, hello. Hey, can we, can we can we knock on Damon's head for a second? McFly. Hey, McFly. <laughs> like, can we can we just fucking knock on Damon's head here for a second? We know the world's a shithole, Damon. We know it. We're we're actually here to get away from it. <laughs> like, I don't know. Maybe somebody needs to write Damon a memo. <laughs> In 317, these changes are going to be largely invisible to players. It's really more about it <laughs> giving the feature and the tools to... No, the cameras always stay on in prison. <laughs> Damon, and the soap is very slippery, Damon. ...really want in 318 and onward. <laughs> this content will enable us to, for instance, in Xenothreat, make it so that you can actually be on the side of Xenothreat <laughs> instead of just trolling other players. In addition, for Jump Town, this will help us to sort of patch some of the holes that, that's where a smart players move, can kill exploit devil. the system by that's grabbing a, smart a quick move. crime stat after they've already pulled out their packages and not have to actually fight people in order to get their drugs. This also enables us to take a lot of our existing content for the lawful side and make criminal missions so that there is actually content in the game for criminals to do in the long term, not just with these events. And of course, with additional dynamic events rolling out in the future, we can start building with this in, t in mind from the start. This feature will allow us to say that this event is going to have this faction versus this faction, and players will be able to be on those sides in a much more permanent and uh, invested fashion. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that Microtech's first river is the next step forward in the systemic tools that will allow developers to bring more texture hazard and opportunity to star citizens planets and moons that the reputation system and its continuing development remain at the heart of enabling developers to create more meaningful and effective mission content 
and that upcoming hostility changes means maybe I won't get punished so quickly when I turn a friendly hello into accidental, unintended friendly fire. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. We'll see you all next week. Yeah, we didn't do a slow-mo this week. Can you believe that? We didn't do a slow-mo this week. I don't think there was any part of this that we could have our slow-mo section of the Inside Star Citizen review. This is the first time this has happened in about ages. This is a legendary Inside Star uh, Citizen review where we did not get our slow-mo section. Um, I feel sad about that. But again, we, we look at this, and I, I do have to say this, that I do get upset when these are only eight minutes long because these shows are funded by subscription money by subscribers us that subscribe right and i would like more meat with my potatoes you understand what i'm saying i know we have the star citizen live that happens friday which is the next day but really this show is supposed to be like that kind of promotional show that grabs new people or keeps people that have been playing interested in the game and it's supposed to grab your attention and it's supposed to give you you know, a, like to me, a little bit more than what I'm seeing here, especially for the fact that I've been a subscriber for so long. And, you know, I think that's valid criticism. I think that needs to happen. I think these need to be at least 10 minutes long. I think anything under 10 minutes, and I'm thinking to myself, they just slapped a, a, an episode together, right? And then you got the dilemma. You got that dilemma where they have to balance it and they have to say, okay, well, how much do we want to show versus how much do we want to kind of keep back? And, you know, I, I understand that, but I still think there needs to be a little bit more substance, especially for people that have been subscribers and putting that money in for quite a while. It just needs to be a little bit more. This this year, they've they've kind of, if you look at the, the times on a lot of these, they've kind of shrunk the amount of time down on these episodes. And man, I just want to get back to that vibe that I used to get a long time ago. Uh, a wingman's hanger. I just want, I want to feel that. I want to feel that again, the excitement. Like I, I start to feel like they've been doing this for so long that it kind of just grinds on them. And I want like a, a fresh, you know, I just want a, a breath of, of fresh air just to kind of hit this. You know, I, it's, it's, it's what I, it's what I'm feeling this year. And maybe it's just cause the year is just so shit. <laughs> you know, like maybe because we went into a pandemic into World War Three, maybe that could be it as you know, like maybe, maybe who knows, maybe that's it. <laughs> uh, Matt, Matt Hatcher says he agreed. Uh, Damon says for the money and time these guys have uh, the simulation better be so good. I want my care waiting in line for medical help after getting his dog. <laughs> caught in the zipper <laughs> fucking david dude uh do you feel t says sketch <laughs> yes yes uh max says uh max Zool says yeah dg360 take time to smashing potatoes and let's moat play with the pulp yep yep dude wayne man's hanger was fun strigley absolutely man i i i i watched last week on the morning podcast we do and we were watching uh, some content creator had put together, I think his name was not Gemini, and he put together a very well-constructed video that was 10 years of Star Citizen development in 10 minutes. Now, if you go to DG360, you can go there, you can watch the replay where we sit down and we're live. And we watched this, and I was kind of silly during it, and I did like some fast... I, I'm just being me as I usually am, but watching it, it was, it was, it, I had this nostalgia and I, and I felt that connection back with how it started. And I really thought like, you know, I think really it needs, th remember when Chris and Sandy used to get on, I really think that, you know, just because a project has grown to the amount that it has, I really feel like Chris and Sandy need to make a reconnection again. And I know that they've gone through a lot in the journey, but I really think it needs it needs to kind of go back to its roots again. Like a, a, a just, you know, for as long as we've been doing this, I feel like it just needs like a, a, a reboot of sort where the person who started this all comes back in you know and i i feel like that's kind of missing a little bit maybe you know maybe i'm just you know crying about it uh 
But I, I think that's, again, I think that is also valid criticism as well. Um, Chris has gotten to the point, Kill Devil, where I think, you know, he was just tired of, like, all the trolls and the fucking people just, you know, some of, like, what we were talking about, like, in terms of, like, a long time ago, I always laugh because it's funny, people... Now, some people go, oh, DG is a white knight. I fucking laugh my ass off. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like two or three years ago, people were calling me a naysayer. You know, like I, I started getting on financials and talking about the business and the and the inside of it and how it's run and and kind of management dis, uh, misdirection and and saying how I wanted to see a profit being posted on the, on the P&Ls. And then they posted the profit. They posted it. <laughs> like, like, you know, they did what I wanted to see. And they're being, they're very successful. They're doing a great job. And <laughs> like, you know, they're bringing in the revenue and they're posting profits. It's really important, actually. And they did. You know, like, so, you know, as a rational human being, you look at the data, you look at the facts, and you say, okay, like, you know, you, you, you go with that and you, and you speak about it. And you talk about the truth of what's going on, right? Sure, they, there's still problems. You know, the 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 whole roadmap thing uh, was kind of a debacle. But I talk about that on the channel as well because the the Zylo uh, community manager kind of mishandled things, uh, kind of put the blame on 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 the backers, which I didn't think was the right route. You know, that's not too smart professionally speaking. But you know, at the same time, you you. You also have to think on the other end of the spectrum of people that are doing this every single day, working their asses off, and they have to also deal with like, you know, blah, 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 blah. like as a content creator, trust me, I get that side as well, you know? <laughs> David says, DG to sing, post nudes, please. I wouldn't mind, you know, if they want to post nudes, go for it, A+. plus. I mean, that's only going to help me have a better positive mindset, Damon. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to get mad at people that give you what you ask for. Right. We talked about that as well, Sketch, and how all these stretch goals that we voted on these things, that the issues of the the amount of time that has surpassed is not directly because Sig is putting this on us. It's what we wanted. It's what the backers wanted from the origin point. You know, a lot of people forget about that sketch. So very good comment there, buddy. Uh, DY says, the gist of the situation, are we there yet? No. Are we there yet? No. Are we there yet? No. Right. Right, DY. Right. Like, it, it is relative. I had a comment today, too, that I thought was really a, a very interesting comment. And it was a video I had posted talking about, I think it was the morphologist video in which I was starting to wax a little poetic. And I was, I was basically saying that, you know, what, what I was just saying is like we voted on these uh, expansions of, of what we wanted. Like our imaginations ran wild with this. With the original promise, it kind of blew up into much more than it originally started out to be. That is the feature creep. We are responsible for it, not SIG. We, we said yes. <laughs> we wanted the pain. <laughs> we, we didn't, I think, understand how much work it was going to be but we surely wanted it and now it's like we got to work through it and it's not going to be easy and that amount of time is directly related to the amount that people have pledged and you get into the column of this and people might disagree with me and that's fine have your own opinion on this i've got mine my opinion is this if the if the money is discretionary, if and, and they're somewhat of an adult, right, then it's no big deal that it's taking this amount of time. It becomes more of an emotional investment when people start to pledge more money that is not discretionary. When they're starting to develop a, an addiction, <laughs> and they're pledging with money that really should be spent on like your rent <laughs> or your bills, right? And people then, they care. They care a lot. And as they should, but you, they ha you have to look at like the root of it, right? Right? When you have a game that is basically trying to do what it's trying to do, 
and the scope of it because the people who backed it wanted it to be basically every type of gameplay you can imagine uh, and experience that you could have in a game. When you have it take this amount of time, I think that's something you have to look at. I think that's at least one factor uh, of of why you're seeing a lot of people uh, that that continually say, when is it coming out? When is it coming out? When is it coming out? Uh, me personally, the amount of money that I've spent personally, and I'm not talking about um, the money that we've used for giveaways, because if you talk about the funds that you guys help fund the channel with, and I take that money and I push it towards ship purchases or, or pledges, and then give it back to you guys, we're talking thousands upon thousands. And I think that's healthy because I'm helping the project and I'm helping other people that are here on the channel. I'm, I'm giving them ships and I'm helping the project. I love doing that. I think that's great. I think that's positive in both directions. But I'm talking about my personal money. What's up, Slim? How you doing, buddy? Welcome to the fam. This is what you're a part of. This is what you're a part of, buddy. Welcome to it. We're a little crazy here. <laughs> But if you really think about it, I, I think that, you know, for me, I put in like $150 personally. And and that's, you know, not a lot of skin in the game personally, right? I love the project. And I'm not upset that it's taking the amount of time that it's taking because I haven't put a lot of money in. Now, if you're talking about the money, amount of money that we've used in funds to, to fund the community, to fund DG360, we're talking probably... I mean, like over the past couple of years, 10,000, 15,000, you know, like we, we, we continually are shoving money into the project to help them and also giving ships uh, back to people that support the channel. So I think that's like, again, doubly positive. I think that's important, you know, to continue on. These people have jobs. These are real people, real jobs, and they make money. They make, they, they, they get their income from what it is that they do. And, Everything that I've seen in terms of the P&Ls, uh, the amount of revenue they've made, they're growing. And so they're doing something. I think that's positive. You know, I think it's positive what they're doing in terms of helping people uh, have a livelihood, <laughs> you know. So anyway, how much went to hair care? Dude, trust me, when I started this, like we, we talked about this in Discord, you know. When I started uh, covering Star Citizen, I had a full head of hair, full head of hair. In fact, hold on. Don't we have a picture of that here? Yes. Here's here's what I look like, guys, just so you understand. Uh, we talked about this earlier today. If you're not part of our Discord, by the way, you definitely are going to want to go in there. Uh, man, uh, well, is the Discord link not working? God damn it, the Discord link isn't working um, i'm sorry if you go down below you can you can check it great people i love the people here by the way they're awesome but this is how it started yeah i was yeah man i was rocking the blonde hair yeah you, right kita <laughs> it's a fucking adonis i'm still sexy as hell you know bald is the new bald is the new uh you know uh full head of hair bald is the new mane of hair uh, i'm just going with the times I could grow that again if I wanted to. Just saying. <laughs> this 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 is the progression, right? I to me, I feel that I am much more uh, of a of a of a of a prize, if you ask me. Uh, but that's how it started, right there. That's how it started. <laughs> Fucking amen. <laughs> if you aren't in our Discord, you guys better get our Discord, man. It's really the best best community time, man. Best commuter time, people. I freaking love you. By the way, very nice of Paul. Uh, I, I, I got to send him a thank you. That was super nice of him to do the raid. And if you are here from Astro Pub, uh, I, I love Paul. I got to be back on the show. It's been way too long. Mm. Pepe, we need the link. Can you send us a link? Just send us send us a link to the to the Discord if you can. Thank you, Pepe. Put it down in there. Thank you, Pepe. Jeez, you actually did something. With a new board, you feel like your job is threatened, don't you? He does. Pepe's feeling very threatened lately. You should. Wait till I talk about it on the morning stream. Wait till I wait till I talk about it on the morning stream and everything I've had to deal with you on this week. Anyway, guys, 
<clears throat> I I can't thank any of you enough. Like you guys have always been there supporting the channel. I appreciate you. Uh, congratulations to our winners of the Vanguard Hoplite, uh, the hundred dollar Amazon gift card, all the other prizes and the fun we've had along the way. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, you know, like over five hundred dollars of prizes last month, nearly like a thousand dollars the prior month. We we gave away so much. Props to Saint Grizz for what he did. Oh my God, man! I mean, like. We had we gave away an Orion for God's sake. We gave away an 890 jump for God's sake. I mean, like, what other amazing things have we given out these past couple months? Look, look, <laughs> fucking Damon's posted in the Discord trying to get. Look at me! Look at me! <laughs> oh. It's been a crazy night. I wanted to have a little bit of an after party, but it is so damn late. Um, so we will have our morning stream, and uh, we are going to have a lot of fun. I'm going to talk about quite a bit, but I'm very happy about seeing uh, physics for boats being added. This is something I, I definitely want to... They're gonna, you know, how much money they're gonna make starting to sell like <laughs> aquatic vehicles now, you know what I'm saying? But like, I've always wanted boats. The rivers looks good, loving it. Uh, there is, believe it or not, game development in Star Citizen happening in 2022. People, can you believe it? it it's it's actually going to happen, despite what other people say. <laughs> there will be game development, uh, so don't worry about that. My head hurts. I swear to God, my head hurts. It still hurts. I I posted that I posted that highlight today. I know because I saw sketch sketch. I saw you comment like five six times on that. <laughs> my head was exploding, reposting that today. You know, <laughs> right, 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 right. It's all opinion. It's all opinion. Right, right. Listen, I'm telling you guys right now, freaking love you. I will see you in the morning tomorrow. Pepe, what time we start tomorrow? What do you think? 8.30, 9 o'clock, somewhere thereabouts. All right. I love, I love the new board. Uh, I am thanking them. Thank you, everybody, for helping us raise the money for a new Rode, Rode uh, Caster Pro board that is working out very awesome. We will have sound drops. <clears throat> they will be awesome. And uh, I appreciate you guys so very much for making it happen. And uh, we're just getting more professional day by day. And that's what we do here. Thank you so much for joining me on the Inside Star Citizen Review tonight. There will be a stream tomorrow around 9 o'clock a.m. in the morning. And we got a lot that we're going to just chill out and have a good time in the morning like we always do. So... I can't wait to see you guys again, and it is so nice to be back chilling out with you guys. I missed you. I will see you tomorrow morning. All right, Pepe. Hit those credits up, buddy. <laughs> <laughs>